So looking back at the color palette for the month, I can remember that I've got these really beautiful reds and the darker blues. So what I think I'm going to do is actually paint the background um, in the Payne's Gray. Maybe create like almost like a night sky look. Maybe. Um, let's start there and see how that goes. So I am using just the Arteza paints. You guys can use whatever paints you want. I just and I've been enjoying these. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put some of the Payne's Gray out. Now their paints gray tends to be a little bit transparent. Um, so we'll see if that bugs me or not. So I am a big fan of the Artie Shills brushes. Um, I love them so much. Um, and Shilpa is such a wonderful uh, artist in our community that I like to support her and share the word. So her brushes come in um, a whole bunch of different sizes. Um, and I'll list them this month. But this is the Filbert and it's a size 8. So I'm just going to start. And like I said, they're, um, the Arteza Payne's Gray is a little transparent, so I may have to do a few coats, but we'll see. There's always the hardest part, just starting, right? Committing. Try and remember that this is your sketchbook and it's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be a place where you can be safe and explore. to get a finer brush to get into the details there. But I can get this first layer down. The other thing that you might want to do, if you don't want a big mess on your other pages of your sketchbook, sometimes just do a either a piece of wax paper or a paper towel in between your pages can help um, not, you know, get the pages sticking to each other and whatnot. Tracing paper works well too. I just happen to have some paper towels here, so I'm just going with that. Now here, where I have some sharp edges, because I'm using dark paint, I can, I can edit those edges, right? I don't have to feel committed to um, what resulted from sticking them down. I can, I can make my own edges just by cutting into the, the um, collaged piece. You can really carve them out with the paint. And that does help your collage look uh, a little more um, cohesive when everything kind of flows together instead of feeling like a bunch of pieces separate. I think that's why people a lot of times don't think they like collage because when they try it, everything feels too separate or everything feels too disjointed. And the key with making a beautiful collage is to connect and to oh, really making a beautiful piece of art in general, a well-designed piece of art, is that it feels the separate pieces 
make sense together. And um, how you do that is through a couple different ways, but um, one of the best ways is by color connection. So having a color move through a piece, move through a collage. Um, so not using, you know, using, like if I'm gonna use red, I'm not using it just here. It's gonna be here, it's gonna be here, it's gonna be here. There's even stripes of red in the paper. So color connection creates a nice uh, fluidity and um, connection really to the rest of the elements in the piece. Another way is, like I mentioned, repetition. So repeating a pattern or an element so that the eye sees it in more than one place. Another great thing to experiment with when doing collage. Um, yet another way of creating a well-designed piece is focusing on direction. So making sure that there's movement and, and connection between the different elements. So it's not just like a flower here and then a face here and another flower here and there's no connection between, their, between them. There's no movement. Um, you know, I'm using this leaf to guide you in around the head and then the flowers lead you back down and then you're back up again. Even these vertical lines, which I might actually enhance, help drive the eye back up so that you're in this sort of situation, um, which is what you want. You want your viewer, the person looking at your art, to stay in the art. You don't want them, you know, leaving the piece visually. And that's why it's so great to look at other artists and their work and start to analyze why you like the piece and where your eye goes. Um, you can learn so much. You know, just like if you were becoming a writer, you know, what are, what are you usually told to do? You're supposed to read, you know, read the classics, right? And the reason obviously behind that is to learn what did the great writers do in their books that make them so successful. Um, it's the same with art. You know, this is why you look back at art history. So you can understand what were the ingredients and what were the techniques and what were the thoughts behind great pieces of art. So then you can understand those elements and hopefully, you know, bring those elements into your own work. So I'm really digging this dark, dark blue against the red. I think it's so pretty. And I know we already did sort of a moon girl in January, but you know, I'm just following my instinct here and um, I've been very drawn to this sort of, this circle around the head thing going on. Um, this is another one of Shilpa's brushes. This is the uh, number six. And this is a round brush, I believe, yeah. Just trying to get in there and get some of those finer moments here. Now with her dress or whatever you want to call it, I think I'm going to go in with some white and some gray and make it a really soft white gray sort of hint at a garment maybe. So I'm just using the gray from Arteza and some titanium white. Going back in with that same brush, the number six. I think.
think I want it more white than gray. So let's see how this goes. I'm definitely going to connect some of this paint. I usually use my finger and I'll drag it down into the, um, the collaged pieces. Because again, I'm trying to connect. I mean, sometimes you want things to be very separate, you know, on purpose, but I want the collage to connect to the, to this figure so that they don't feel too separate. I think you can tell there's a separate element, but they relate to each other. Again, I can play with cutting into the darkness of her hair, be a little more painterly. So I'm going to go ahead and stick the moth down because um, he's going to be important. I'm just drying off one of my brushes here, the one that I used for gluing last time, but I'm going to try and make sure it's pretty dry. You don't want to water down the glue. It'll just give you more wrinkles and that's not what we're after. So pop some glue down. And this is where I can tell that I'm reaching a nice point in my art making because I feel very relaxed and I feel like things are unfolding the way I want them to, which always feels good, right? Now I know I didn't cut out his antenna, but I'm going to, I'm going to paint around it. Okay guys, so now that I have my moth on here, um, I wanna develop the flame element. So I've put out a little bit of the orange red. I'm also putting out some vermilion red. Um, and even though I don't have yellow listed on our, on our um, color palette, we're gonna need some yellow. So this is Indian yellow. And I think I'm also gonna put out some mid yellow because I really want this moth to be like on fire. Let me just think about this for a minute.
So the outer parts of a flame tend to be a little bit more yellow, whereas the insides tends to get deeper red from what I can see in pictures. And I don't want to totally lose, you know, all the aspects, all the like patterning in this moth, but I'm not going to stress over trying to get every little bit. So I do want it to feel a little bit more painterly. So you can see I'm kind of going from the outside and moving more red towards the center. And I know that this is very orange looking and I'm going to bring aspects of that into the flowers too so that it connects. And you can see I'm using a little bit of water so that it stays a little bit transparent. See, and while I've got these colors, I'm going to go into the poppies. and add some of this fire effect as well. And this is kind of what I meant by like customizing your collage. You know, you can always add in your own touches and your own tints and colors and details onto the things you've collaged. So think of the collage as kind of just a basis. Now I don't want, I don't want the flowers to compete too much with the, with this guy, but I do want there to be a, a color connection. And also I like the idea that you know, if this is my creative fire, it comes out of me, right? It comes out of us as expression, as art, as emotion. So flowers are kind of representing for me of that element. And then around her chest area, I want there to be kind of a, turn this. I have to go even lighter than that.
And any of the line work that I lose in the moth, I can always bring back with pens and pencils and whatnot. So I'm not too worried about that. I'm gonna switch brushes now because I gotta use my favorite little scrubby brush. This is the Princeton size six, uh, Princeton Select Round Blender. And I love using it for more like scumbling effects. Because I want there to be sort of a glow coming off the moth. 